Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Aviva, and hello. And if you're already subscribed here, hello, hello, welcome. That's right, guys, if you're subscribed, you get an extra hello. Um, today we're gonna be talking about how I learned UX design in three months. Yes, yes, user experience design, self-taught, three months. And I want to kind of share with you the roadmap that I did, the roadmap, the roadmap that I did, what I would have changed, what I would have kept, and what I would advise for you going on this journey. So first of all, why, and I have a job in the field and I work in the field at a tech company and I'm not just some person talking about this on the internet. So I, I actually got hired with my self-taught abilities. Um, so how, what is the reason that I decided to go into UX? I heard it's a really interesting job. I heard it's creative and it pays. You basically get paid to do art, which is rarely the case if you're not like, you know, part of some like global corporation. Um, so I like that I could flex my artistic side. I like that I wouldn't have to like be financially unstable. I like the stability of it. I think people really downplay how much that can actually help you feel comfortable in life. And I think it's a fair thing to acknowledge financial stability. Um, I also wanted to work with smart people. That was at the top of my list. I wanted to be with people who are motivated, who want to and care about learning continuously. I wanted to be part of a team of people that I really look up to. And I wanted to also do something that was innovative and new. And I had two opportunities really standing before me, which one was going more into filmmaking and one which was going more into UX design. And I decided to go with UX design. And those are basically the reasons. Now, how did I approach UX design? I think initially, you really want to understand if you like it or not. It's really important for you to get a feel if you enjoy this field or maybe it's not for you and it's totally valid. So initially I sat down to meet with people and have a coffee with them and ask them what it's like to be a UX designer. And I realized really quickly that doing that, you don't actually get to understand what people actually do in their day in the life because it's not the same as like shadowing someone. So if it wasn't a pandemic, I'd probably go to their office and see what they actually do, but it was a pandemic. So I decided to YouTube some day in the life videos of being a UX designer, which is something I am currently making. So come back next week if you're interested in seeing that. And basically I just had a really good time um, trying to understand what that looks like, but it wasn't the same as getting the hands-on feel, you know what I'm saying? So I decided to set myself out a project and I was basically going to make three different flows on three different UX design applications. So therefore, if I really didn't enjoy Figma, I could do Azure. If I didn't enjoy Azure, I could do Adobe. And kind of like hopping around between those. So I'd get like a really holistic view of what it's like to be a UX designer. So I started with Adobe XD, it was okay. It, it, the project looked awful. And then <laughs> I tried Azure. I actually became a Microsoft student ambassador, believe it or not, for UX design with Azure. And then um, I became more familiar with Figma, which is the one that I uh, use today and which I enjoy using most because it's very collaborative, you know, have FigJam, and I think it's really cool. So I got kind of an experience of what it's like doing the technical skill. Now, I think something a lot of people what what my method I think which I think was the best actually going on and trying and I recommend it for you. I think definitely it misses a really big part of the work, which is I'm gonna bet with you that 70% of the time that UX designers are being UX designers, they're not actually designing. Um, although the design it takes so much time, but a lot of it actually goes into researching and a lot of it goes to talking with clients, talking with your team, talking with your product manager, um, communicating with the dev, what's going on behind the scenes. And um, it, a lot of it isn't actually the work, which is like really surprising. I know, it's like super crazy. A lot of it is even just trying to understand the product. Like if it's really vague and you're still trying to understand what you need to build, that in itself could take a really long time. So that is something I didn't always know. And I wish someone would have told me that a lot sooner actually, because it would have been a bit more of a expectation setting, I think for what the job is actually like. So that's what I started with. And then I went, I talked to the wisest person I know in UX design who was a UX designer for the military and then became a UX designer for a bunch of really good companies at a very young age. And this person told me, hey, go look at the forefather of UX design. So I actually made, I mentioned him in a previous uh, video as well, which is UX design books. And his name is Nielsen Norman from the Nielsen Norman Institute, which he founded. 
and he talks about UX design and he does incredible work in the field and he's no longer with us uh, but he really did awesome awesome work and I basically studied a lot of his stuff from his websites from his videos I was trying to understand more or less the methodology how you rank good design or bad design because there's actually um, quantitative not fully quantitative but you could find ways to make things a little bit more quantitative when trying to measure if something is good or bad so it's more database it's more based on actually parameters that you're looking to find inside the design as opposed to just like I feel like this design is good yeah I feel like this design is not good like sometimes you need a little bit more than just like someone's opinion you know what I'm saying so a good design is data drivenly good right Bad design, not data-drivenly good. And then of course you have other things that you're gonna take into account. Is it good for the environment? Is it good for you know, the people's actual joy? Or is it just distracting? There's a bunch of things that can go into that, but there's definitely parameters for measuring good design and bad design. And through understanding that, I got to understand when I build a design, what is actually a good design? Because I was looking at it from a different, a different perspective. Um, and it wasn't like I was just going and asking people for feedback. I was trying to see through the lens of someone with a lot of experience like Nielsen Norman. So slowly, it was almost like he was my imaginary consultant for UX design. And with that kind of ability, I could put on my Nielsen Norman goggles and look at my work and be a bit more um, critical and have useful feedback. So I was working on making better designs and I joined a bunch of Reddit communities, which I'm still part of, and I, I try to participate there. And part of me making these videos is to contribute to those communities that help me. Um, and I also try to find people who are in the field, people who are also learning that I could collaborate with, but I really try to focus on the ones that were in the right direction, who were doing the things right, so I wasn't getting any um, you know, misinformation about what UX design actually is, and good UX design in particular is actually. And then as I went through this world of sifting through information, I realized that I really have to get a lot better with understanding research and the research that you do beforehand to make big UX design decisions. Um, diving into the research, I really spent a lot of time doing that and really understanding how it's like to do user interviews in different scenarios and what A-B testing really is and the different things that I would actually A-B test, like I think uh, an empty state, for example, is a really good time and place to do a uh, A-B test because it is a uh, really big key performance indicator for the company whether things are being created or not and that typically happens on an empty state. You don't know what an empty state is. It's basically like before you added anything into like a Google Drive, you'll get a prompt of like add your first file to Google Drive. Click below or drag and drop a file so you can, you know what I'm saying? And then you have the CTA button. So that's basically an empty state. After really working on uh, the research, understanding the research, I got better at my presentation skills and I would actually practice in front of people. And this came really useful as I was transitioning into uh, getting ready to do my first interviews in the field. And if there's something that I could recommend for everyone, whether you're in uh, computer science and you're trying to become a software engineer or if you're trying to become an analyst or a product manager, definitely go to every interview that you're able to get because the first 10 interviews will probably suck and you'll just get, not 10, but maybe five will suck and you're just gonna get incredible experience because you're gonna get better and better and better. And as you get better at them, you're gonna slowly learn how you can improve. So when you get the job interview that you really do wanna nail, you're gonna know exactly what you need to do to nail it. It took me a while, I'll be honest with you, but when I started understanding that as the interviewee, I too have power, and things can also measure to my expectations. It's almost like the power dynamic flipped in my mind and things change and my interviews went a lot better. But sometimes it's not enough to just hear that from someone. It's something that you have to like ingrain into you. So experience, the biggest teacher of life, truly. Um, yeah, so this is basically how I self-taught myself UX design in three months. In addition to doing these things, I did a UX design course on Google, which I could do for free without getting the certification. If you want help in understanding how you can do that, just write me a comment below. Um, it's like a little trick hack-ish thing. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of other resources that I can recommend, so definitely write me if you're interested in any particular ones. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see some more of my videos or if you enjoyed this one, just drop a little like, have a little look, and keep exploring and learning, guys. And normally my videos are a bit more funny, but I felt like this one, I just wanted to be very 
focused with you and present. So I hope that you enjoyed. Bye.